Hi, this is Travis from the Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this clip on the Political Voices Network. What did, I didn't get your reaction yet to the Washington Post reporting, which is, of course, infuriating. But, you know, you always talked about the counterintelligence uh, investigation uh, of Trump, starting back with Russia. I mean, this is what's, you know, we have, you know, those of us that are patriots and are hopeful, we're like, they must be working on these things. And then in some cases we find, oh, no, they weren't. You know, I, I, what happened? I mean, is there a counterintelligence investigation of everything Trump has done or, or what? I mean, I don't understand we, how our national security works in this regard. Well, we had actually learned. I mean, the, you have to go right back to the beginning of this. The people who were, who took part in the crossfire hurricane investigation, which was a sensitive investigation of a president of the United States, started with the head of FBI spy hunters. When you say counterintelligence, think spy hunter, all right? That's the actual job. It was Peter Strzok, the guy that was the first person Trump went after because people in the FBI identified the guy who could most put Trump at risk. And that's when they found that Peter Strzok had a relationship with a Department of Justice lawyer named Lisa Page, and then Trump went after him as Peter stuck in his lovers. That was deliberate to get rid of the one guy yep. that could talk to Russia legitimately. Then, of course, that neutralized the FBI's capacity to want to go after him. This is insane. The Mueller report specifically, specifically did not do counterintelligence. Yeah. It specifically did not investigate his ties to Moscow other in the most cursory way, which he had in the first two paragraphs that he was tied to Russia and benefited from Russia. So for the FBI now, for us to find out that they deliberately did not investigate this because they were worried about the president and what it would look like. Letting them off the hook. You go after Hunter Biden on nothing and you literally have a man who may, based on these documents, have either been working for Russia's interest or working to be paid or working to find some benefit that will financially benefit him from Russia or Saudi Arabia or who knows. Yeah. I mean, I will we ever find that? Will we ever I mean, that that's the part of this you just wonder, are we ever are those shoes going to drop? Are we going to find out what he did with this intelligence? Well, I, I think that and this is where we, we have to be a little careful. The problem with spy hunters, these counterintelligence guys, is that they're really focused on getting the pathway of the uh, of the spies that they're looking at or people who may be working for them. They want to take down networks, not individuals. If you'd like to see a good example of that, watch the, you know, uh, Brad Pitt movie Allied. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it was about taking down networks of spies. Mm -hmm. But in this particular circumstance, they don't seem particularly interested in the person who may have committed the crime in America. They're more interested in where that information have gone. But the point is you can't separate A and B. Half Thank that you. information I saw in my analysis was about Iran. It would only benefit two countries. One, we'd probably give it to Israel anyway. But the Saudis, I don't know, maybe they'll yeah. buy the entire PGA golf franchise and drop $2 billion into your wallet. These are the shoes that have yet to fall. Yep. And I think we get to that. I think I think Jack Smith is not the guy to be messed with with regards to counterintelligence. Yep, I agree. Um, you uh, fighting, speaking of fighting misinformation on the Twitter, someone tweeted, what's happening in Ukraine is so immoral. The Ukrainian army is being destroyed and the army has not even reached the Russian lines. Folks, this war did not have to happen. This war was provoked and then extended by the incompetence running U.S. policy. You said this is the most ridiculously uninformed man on the planet next to Trump, MTG, and Putin. Um, let, please unscrew him with some facts. I'll do it for you. Russia is losing badly. Um, I... There's, first of all, there's so many tentacles. <laughs> You've been talking about Trump, Russia. We've been talking about Bobby Kennedy Jr., the far right Moms for Liberty just invited him to speak. You know, I, I had uh, uh, Travis pull this. There was many, many stories. This one happens to be from the Hill. Trump's victory margin smaller than total Jill Stein votes in key swing states. I mean, I, oh my God, Malcolm, please tell me everything you wrote about in your book that's in the Mueller report, that's in the Senate Intelligence Report, we're not going to do again. You know, it, it, it's... I, 
because we have now on the left some of these anti, you know, these Putin apologists, anti-vaxxers that are, you know, the ones coalescing around, I guess, the Bobby Kennedys. You know, usually I start plugging plot to hack America and plot to destroy democracy. Yeah. They outlined the first four years of this. The book that I actually did the worst is a book called The Plot to Betray America. Yeah. I reread it last week. My own book. <laughs> it came out before Trump. before the 2016 election, people. Before the 2016 election. <laughs> it, it's literally about how his entire internal team was bought by the Russians and the Saudis. Yeah. And now I'm starting to think maybe I maybe I plugged the wrong book at first. The plot to betray America is exactly what we're going through now. Now we're seeing, and I said this many times, there is a bridge we cannot see, but we know people crossed it. It's a question of finding where the bridge is located, what it's made of, and how it materializes. And so now as, you know, we have these people like the the guy who you quoted on Twitter who's talking about Ukraine, that guy was the head of the Green Party, the presidential or vice presidential nominee under Jill Stein. Yeah. We have to understand the Russians aren't doing anything anymore. They have handed it off to their chaos agents in the United States. Anyone that even thinks about voting for anyone other than the Democratic Party, you're voting for Russia, Trump, the fall of Ukraine, and the end of democracy in this world. Ah, I get so yeah. worked up about Well, I mean, this is just, you know, and again, no, uh, this is why I pulled cold, hard numbers, Malcolm, because... <laughs> As you wrote, if we've said over and over again, Paul Manafort shared polling data in these three states with the Russians. <laughs> that Mike wrote, this is the Electoral College that and Hillary Clinton lost by 75,000 vote. The, the, the absolute Russian operation, as you wrote and others wrote, was micro targeted for Bernie voters to either stay home, vote for Jill Stein or vote for Trump. I mean, NPR says 10 percent of Bernie voters voted for Trump. Washington Post says 12 percent of Bernie voters voted for Trump. I mean, but you add to that the Jill Stein votes. The Russian operation worked exactly as it was designed, didn't Absolute. it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, they have, you know, I find it hard to keep saying, well, it's the Russians, well, it's the Trump guys, well, it's the Bernie Green voters, whatever you want. Now I'm just going to start categorizing the entire class as enemies of democracy. And yeah. those Bernie voters are no longer Bernie voters. They went over and became hard. Trump voters. You know, we, we always say that have this joke about libertarians. Libertarians are just, you know, marijuana smoking Republicans. <laughs> you know, so uh, uh, many of those people thought Jill Stein, Bernie Sanders, now people who, you know, are in that league backing Trump are now also the same people who back Moscow over Ukraine by saying we want peace and no war, just give Russia everything. Or who are this rabid, far crazy left come around from the right liberals who were anti-vaxxers who love Gwyneth Paltrow and, you know, yoga, but <laughs> hate having their children get, you know, vaccine for meningitis yeah. or not just COVID, the flu or smallpox or other diseases which will kill their children. We have an entire class of enemies of democracy. Sorry, I'm, you're making a very good point. I also need to stop my dog from chewing on the wires that might take us off the air, so I threw a giant white toy at him. Okay. <laughs> In case you're wondering, I'm, I'm still paying attention to you. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, it is it is like a recurring nightmare that I'm like, we're not going to do this again. In 2024, yep. are we where, I mean, you know, this other headline, Moms for Liberty has been infiltrated by hardcore right-wing groups. Far-right Moms for Liberty promotes RFK Jr. as guest speaker. I'm like, oh my God, Mom, acid flashback. Moms for Liberty <laughs> was created by Steve Bannon. Thank right. you. And Roger Stone. Robert F. Kennedy was recruited by Steve Bannon and Roger Stone. Yeah. These people, stop referring to them as Democrats. Stop referring to them as independents. Start referring to them as re Republican chaos agents. I keep talking about meta narrative framing. You, the listener, you have to stop using the phrases they want you to use and start calling them what they are enemies of democracy, right? And right wing chaos agents. Yeah. And also, I was saying Bill Barr can shut his big yap 
about, you know, yes, he, you know, he's saying the right things about J6 and about classified documents. But, you know, he's, he went in his defense, went on to say, oh, well, you know, Trump was a victim of a witch hunt in Trump, Russia, you know, which is he knows. I, I've said this before, Malcolm, he knows that Donald Trump is just as big a traitor to this country and an obstru- obstructor of justice and a criminal as he did back during Trump, Russia that he covered up for. It's exactly the same story again in classified documents, isn't it? God, do we really have to listen to that Fred Flintstone looking? Uh, you know, uh, you know uh, this man corrupted the office of the attorney general in, in ways that no one under Nixon did. He should have gone to prison. Yeah. The, this guy got me pulled off air for three weeks just on a verbal yeah. to MSNBC. And then we found out every word I had written for four years yeah. was true. That yeah. shows you the power of a person that will stand up, look you in the eye, and lie. The yeah. only reason that Bill Barr is saying this is because there are certain country clubs in Florida that he wants to keep going to that are owned by DeSantis's crew. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, Malcolm, uh, read everything Malcolm's ever uh, ever read, and we've linked to it at stephaniemiller.com. Love you, Malcolm. See you next week. Hi, everybody. Juliana Forlano here for the Political Voices Network. We hope you're enjoying Political Voices and all the content we provide on the daily. Now, there are a few new programs in the wings that are going to launch just in time for election season. If you're able and would like to help us continue bringing you all this content, please help support us by clicking the join button. We're going to have some perks for members, including early video release you get the information first. Members only chat rooms, live shows, member badges, all the good stuff and more all coming soon. So click that join button if you can to support us and rest assured we will continue to bring you all the great content you have known from the Political Voices Network and more. Thanks so much. See you soon.